So you've been using React for web development, but lately you've been wanting to build mobile apps with React Native. But wait a minute, are React and React Native really the same thing? In this video, we'll explore the differences between React and React Native and help you understand how to start using React Native as a React developer. And also, we'll let you know the challenges you would face and what to expect while moving from the web to the world of mobile apps. Now, I believe before you'll be in this video, you're already familiar with JavaScript ecosystem and you're already a React developer. Either you're a beginner or you're an advanced uh, React developer, it doesn't matter. But as long as you know React and you know how to use the hooks, you know how to use the props, the states, and uh, create uh, a, um, a component, then you're good to go. Um, before we begin, I would like you to subscribe if you've not subscribed. Um, I would like you to leave a like on this video. I would like you to share this video to your developer friends that are React developers that want to switch to or people that just want to learn how to build mobile apps and uh, are conversant with JavaScript. So React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And React Native on the other hand is React.js but for building mobile applications. They are both developed by Facebook and they share some similarities and some significant differences also. So we'll be running through some things that you have to look out for as a React developer coming into React Native. First on the list, we have the use of native elements. Now in React, you use HTML elements like DIVs and buttons, but in React Native, it's quite different here. You'll use components like view, text, and touchable opacity. These are similar but designed for mobile platforms. So we are using native elements in React Native while we are using HTML elements in React itself. Next on our list is the styling. Now React Native does not support regular CSS. Instead, you style your components using a style sheet object or inline styles. Now this feels like writing the normal CSS. It just feels like writing normal CSS, except that you have to write your styles in an object. Another place that feels so different for React developers coming into React Native would be the navigation. In React, you use React Router, but in React Native, you have to use libraries like React Navigation to handle screen navigation. And it's a bit more complex here because mobile apps require stacks, tabs, drawers, and other stuff. Next, no DOM. So React manipulates the DOM, the document object model, but React Native doesn't have a DOM. Instead, it communicates with native mobile components like buttons and views. Though Expo recently has uh, given us a feature that enables us to use DOM elements in our React Native apps. And that's interesting. Next, we have mobile specific APIs. Now, React Native gives you API to access mobile features like the camera, the GPS, the notifications, and all that. Now, these are not available in regular React for the web, unless maybe you are building a PWA, a progressive web app. We won't conclude this video without talking about the platform. Now, apart from the fact that React Native run on mobile platforms, why React itself run on the web? React Native lets you write one code base, but some things behave differently on iOS and Android. Things like design, performance, and even fonts. Sometimes you just need a platform specific code. By that, I mean you, you might need to specify that this piece of code should be for Android and this piece of code should be just for iOS. Another issue you have to look out for is something also relating to styling and its responsiveness. Now making a website able to fit any screen width or any device is very easy to achieve. You, can, you just have to use media queries on the web. But in React Native, we do it differently. Though we also use Flexbox that also help things become much easier. But when building your app, you will not just set width for everything like for every element sometimes you just have to do a plus and minus on your screen width to determine how a particular element will display on larger or smaller screens so yeah responsiveness is pretty complex here so next we have the debugger so in react you use your chrome dev tools to debug but in react native you you also have tools like react native debugger or metro bundler or even physical device and emulators for testing so moving from react to react native isn't as hard as it seems though this but these uh, key differences can help you avoid frustration and make your learning smoother. So React is ideal for web development, whereas React Native is best suited for mobile app development. Even though React Native can also be used on the web, but it's more ideal for mobile apps, especially when targeting multiple platforms with a single code base. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed every bit of it. So I hope right now as a React developer coming into React Native, you know what to expect and what to what challenges to face ahead and how to go about them. Uh, so please subscribe, leave a like on this video and share this video to encourage me to keep making interesting content and educative content that will help your journey as a mobile developer 
go smoother and easier thank you very much for watching stay blessed